right there. Right, in this clip, I'm just going to go through the uh, best practices for uh, logging into web applications. Um, in the first example you see on the screen, they've got a very simple, straightforward version of a uh, web page login with username, passwords, and submit box. Um, and this will be the version that you first come across on YouTube and um, follow some basic tutorials. It's uh, quick and dirty, it does the job, but um, it's not uh, very resilient when it comes to handling bad passwords, etc., um, and errors on the web page. So, after you've seen this, uh, we'll go straight into a more in depth, more complex version of um, the web page handling. So the example I'm going to give you is for a site that we use for our continuing healthcare team. It's a care track application. So in this version, I have, uh, you'll see several tabs, um, uh, a separate tab for the username, passwords, and logins. Uh, here you have an init tab, which initializes the um, application with uh, window titles, um, etc. Here's the attach um, tab, and there's an activate tab and a launch tab. Um, the init, attach, and activate are all called from the update user field, password, and login. Uh, here, for example, you double click on there, you enter in the details from uh, the initialize page, which will be the Windows underscore title, the process underscore name, etc. Anything with an underscore is initialized within the initialize page. Uh, any page variables that you want to use will just be called Windows space title. Um, very straightforward, keeps everything in, in a, uh, a central location, uh, so you only have to update the variables once. Um, there you go, those are the initialized variables, and notice they're not hidden from anywhere else, so all tabs can see them. Uh, the update password field also uses the same uh, variables. What's happening here is the window title is being passed through to the attach um, objects so that when you call a web application, um, all of the values are entered through the variables rather than using the application modeler um, to define the web page location. There we go, we just had this skip attribute in. And lastly, we've got the login button uh, in it and we'll do the same process here the windows title process name etc this allows you to use the uh, the same script uh, this whole in fact this whole object can be uh, reused for multiple um, web applications if need be um, okay so if we were to start this uh, the first thing to do is to launch the web application go through the process of launching the application and there it is right that is care track just shuffle it around a bit so we can get some screen visible visible to us and right and then we'll come out of this right reset that now let me show you what's going to happen if we try to attach to this at the moment because we haven't actually set up the application modeler as yet so we'll get uh, errors there you go. Click on attach. So this is the next stage. Step through. Is it connected? No, it's not. It's not connected because we do need to actually set up the application model, but we don't actually enter a, a URL for the um, application model. We let that get programmatically added in. So let's save all that. Double click, there you go. There's the application root as default. So we'll go into the application modeler, go through the wizard, uh, set it as a browser-based application, Internet Explorer, one that's already running. Don't type in any URLs and just next, 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 all the way to the end. There we go. Now you've got an, a proper object. So when we go back into this, there's the object. Click there and is connected. And down at the attach, we can do an attach for the same object. There you go. Right, so there's the application up and running. So if we now run through the process, is it attached? Not at the moment, it's not. Read connected, no it's not. Straight on, attach it, and B. 
bingo. We are now attached. Right, next stage. Now we need to start mapping out the um, username, password, and login boxes. Uh, sorry, submit button. Um, and you do this in the in the regular way, um, except that what I'm going to do here is two HTML um, maps for each object and one UIA um, object. Note the naming convention there. It's a field I'm using, so FLD underscore username underscore HTML. Now we identify it. Bingo, that's the one. Click on that. Let's just filter those. Remove the blanks and also the project URL. The project URL there has um, a session cookie in the URL. So the next time the page is loaded, it will be different. So none of this will work. So we repeat this process. This is just for the, the first username HTML. Um, there you go, that's valid. Now I'm gonna do another one this time, but I'm also going to add the index um, to this one, just so it's slightly different from the, uh, the first one in case there's a problem discovering it when the application's running. We'll call it back up. Again, identify it, highlight over it. Click that. Again, deselect the empties and the parent URL and scroll it down to the bottom. Well, okay, scroll it down to the bottom and select the match index. Highlight that again. Click slightly quicker that time. Maybe I should swap those two around and have match index first. Right, last one. Uh, we will do a UIA. Buying. So again, FLD for the field, underscore username, underscore UIA. Right, identify, change the spying mode. There we go. Highlight the box, click. And in it goes. Less options on this, but a useful tertiary backup. So basically repeat that same process for um, the password box and also the submit button. Let's apply that. And then I'll show you what we'll do with it. So we go to the weight. We've got two weights in here. First of all, we'll do the standard HTML and then we'll do the backup HTML. Click OK. Then we'll write to the first HTML, drop it in there. It's complete for that one. The second write, we'll add the backup. Down the bottom here, we've got third. Note also, if there's an exception with the first two, it will drop out to the third, being the UIA and attempt to write to that as well. If that also fails, it goes to an exception. So we've got three attempts at trying to um, write to the username box. And the same goes for the updating the password fields. There's also three attempts at that. So two, if there's any exception to the UIA, and then finally raising the exception at the end. In this particular example, I'm going to enter Donald Duck as the username. And give this a go. Oh, yeah. So attached to it. Is it connected? Yes, it is. Good. Skip the activate. And the username box was there. So if we just highlight the username box, we've now got Donald Duck in there. So that's all worked. As I said, we'll repeat that whole process now through with the password fields. We'll open up the application modeler and repeat the process all the way through. There we go. And that is how to build a resilient login. Note each tab is uh, for uh, treating, uh, sorry, each tab in, uh, for the object is managing each field. So whereas in the sort of examples you find on YouTube, 
um, you'll only you'll have a single tab to hold, run the whole application. Um, that's just not resilient enough for real life work. There we go. All the standard settings. Once you've um, gone through this process several times, you'll actually end up with a, uh, a bare object that you can just copy and paste the tabs from. So every time you come to manage parts of a, um, a web application, you'll just have all of these tabs ready. You can just paste them in, then make the connection, then run the app modeler. Um, and you'll get quite used to doing this. If you've got the um, uh, Blue Prism Cloud, uh, then you'll be using the Wireframer, which gives you an exactly the same um, sort of setup. Um, and basically all I've done is uh, just modified it slightly and then uh, made use of uh, uh, the objects themselves. These particular objects would, in a normal world, also be called from a component. So you'd have the process calling the component and the component calling the, each individual object. Um, that allows you to set the hierarchy for the uh, exception handling for then doubling up um, exceptions to the top of the application. Um, we can cover more of that later, but uh, if you follow this model for uh, navigating any pages, um, it should be a lot more resilient than um, the basic versions you see in the uh, YouTube channels. Right, so let's just put the last one of those in. Oh, that's the uh, backup. And we'll do the UIA. Again, unselect all of those. It is a laborious process doing it this way. It's a lot more effort, um, but it's yeah, when you, it's better than actually having to physically do it every single time anyway. So it's going to be a lot faster. Right. Let's have a look here. That's the password field. We can update that. Oh yes. Right. So just to keep time short, I haven't uh, done the UIA for both of these. So. The resume at the bottom um, won't work in this particular example, but you can add that in for yourself. Just repeat what I did in the very first step for the username box. There we go, right. Same again for the login button. Submit, submit back up. Right, finally add the last bits in and we're almost done. Just back up, be good. There we go. Right now, if we uh, save this and we are complete, I uh, hope you found this useful and uh, feel free to copy the design and use it um, on any of the applications you're running with. And uh, I hope that's helped a lot. Thank you. Bye.